All right, now, okay, we want to define our boundary condition. So if I go back and look at where we stand, this is in our scheme, remember? We've done these, we've defined the basically the elements. Now we need to go back and do the boundary condition. And it really doesn't matter whether you do forces or SPCs first, but uh, we'll do the SPCs and then the forces. These go on, both of these go on what are called load collectors. All right, and we'll define a separate load collector for each. All right, and you'll see why when we define the load cases. All right, so let's first define the load collector for the single point constraints. So I'm going to define a new load collector, and I just call them SPC because they're going to be SPCs. If you have multiple load cases, you can define like SPC for case one, but you know we're going to just you know have one SPC anyway. So in this one. You really don't need to pick the card image. The card image is for some specialized types of cards. So we're just going to create these directly. So there you go. Uh, sometimes it's nice to, so you know, we got the load collector here. You can sort of change the color of it. Maybe I'll make it sort of red. Well, yeah, maybe this green is a nice color. Oh, what happened here? Maybe, uh, what's the green? Well, I don't know. I, I ignore that. Okay, so now we've got a load collector. It's current. I should have mentioned that. You can actually change what's current by right-clicking on them and say, make current. But I, I have only one component and one load collector, so they're always current. But you can see when they're bold like this, that means it's current. Now, what being current means is that when I add new things, if I add new load entities, they'll go into this load collector. If I add, add new elements, it'll go into this component. Right? Okay, so let's just, I'm just going to fully fix those corner nodes, all right? So all the boundary condition stuff is under analysis. And to do SPCs, it's under constraints. Kind of makes sense. We're going to constrain nodes. The load type is an SPC. See, we can do some other ones, which we haven't really talked about in this class. These are some dynamic ones and stuff, but we're going to do SPCs. So there you go. Pick the nodes, and you can define the degrees of freedom. You can set them equal to zero, or you can actually give them non-zero values, all right? So let's just pin everything. So I'm going to free up the rotational degrees of freedom. I'm only going to specify the translational degrees of freedom, and let's pick the nodes. I'll pick that node, that node, that node, and that node, and let's create them. And there they are, all right? Come in as little, little triangles. They look a little big. You can actually affect the size of them by changing that size. It's just what it looks like on the screen at HyperMesh, so it looks a little nicer, all right? All right, so it's created those and it's put them into this SPC load collector. See if we kind of toggle off this little icon, they, they show up or disappear. It's the same with, uh, with the bridge. You can actually turn off the elements. That's just turning off the display. All right, now let's make another load collector for the forces. Load collector, call it downforce, or force, load, call it load, I don't know. Uh, again, we don't want to specify what type. We can make it red if we want. We'll create it. Now you see this one's active. It's current, right? If I right-click back on SPC, I can make that one current. But I want to, I don't want that one actually to be current. I want to make the load, load collector current. So make now when I create entities, it'll go into that. All right, let's just put a downforce, two big downforces here, okay? So again, it's under analysis. It's forces, there you go. And now we're gonna put them in nodes. This, here's the card we're gonna use. You can see actually you can change it to be other things like moment and stuff. Oh no, maybe that's the only one you can do. All right, I guess that's just it. And uh, these are the nodes we're going to apply that to so pick those. Now, the magnitude, I don't know, let's make it uh, 150 pounds each. I don't know what it is. And we can set the direction. So let's set the direction to be the Z direction. Now, I want this to be downward, so I should probably make this a minus 150. There you go. And now we can create them. There you go. Uh, why did I pick the Z axis? Oh, that's stupid. <laughs> I'm sorry, I kind of 
I meant to say y axis. There they are, but you see, I've, now what I have, unfortunately, is a side load, which is not what I wanted. But I can edit that. I can go back to update if you screw something up, and now we can pick those loads. There are the two loads. And I'm going to change that to be the y axis. I don't know why I did that. And I can do update. And what do you want to update? Well, I want to up to date the vector. So let's update it. And there you go. Now it's it's pointing down. Okay. Now it doesn't get the right magnitude, but it has the minus, so that's the way it goes. All right. So it sort of shows it going up, but that's that's the right value. All right. If you want to check it again, if you're not entirely sure, we can actually pick this card edit load and then pick the load edit and you can see exactly what's going on there so it's a force okay the way it did it is as one I actually see it didn't look like, it, it looks like it didn't put the negative in there so I need to fix this okay let's see if we can fix that it looks like what's going on here is it's putting a scale of one and it's giving you 150 in the y direction so I think I need to also let's pick these let's update this one and this one maybe I need to also update the magnitude. So let's update the vector and the magnitude. Uh, see, now it flipped it. And if I look at the card again, I can see that, yeah, that's what I want. Uh, 1 and minus 150. Okay? So that's what I want. All right. So there we go. Now we've got elements, we've got SPCs, and we have loads. So we have our you know, essential boundary conditions and our natural boundary conditions defined. The next thing we need to do is the last step is to define the subcase, or what's referred to in hypermesh as, as the load case. All right. So the way you do that again is again that's an analysis, and here it's or they call it load step. Excuse me, a load step. So you can give it a name. We'll call it uh, case one. I don't know what else you're going to call it. And this allows you to define what collectors we're going to use for the single point constraints and for the loads. This is why you put them on different load collectors. So the SPCs, we're going to use the, the SPCs on that load collector. Likewise, the loads are going to be the loads on that collector. Now, those are very similar to the set ID that you use in NASTRAN to group the SPCs and the loads, okay? So now we can create it. We have that one load step, it's defined here, all right? And you can actually even go into that load step and we can edit it, and you can edit stuff like the output, like maybe you want to output the element forces, we've talked about those, you click that. Or maybe you want to output the SPC reaction forces, or maybe we also want to get the um, what else? Gonna, the, the von Mises strain, right? Let's do. Let's look at the element stress and the element strain, right? Let's get those. All right. I think I can do. I think I, wasn't there a von Mises in here? I guess not. All right. So there you go. So now we return it. All right. So this is pretty much. Uh, the model is defined, okay? You can actually, if we do control cards, control cards you can set, the last couple things that you need to do is like set the solver, so we can actually set it to be solver 101, okay? So that's in there. And I think that pretty much does it. Um, so now let me save this model. Turn, come on. I've never saved this, actually. I probably should have done that. I'll just save it. Let's, I'm going to do it locally. I'm going to put it on my documents, because I think I can. I'm going to call it truck bridge. 
Okay, so this is saving the hypermesh file. This does not write the NASTRAN file, right? This is just saving what's a .hm file. Okay, that's a hypermesh file. To get the NASTRAN file, you go here and you export the solver deck. Right? So we're going to export the solver deck. This will write the NASTRAN input file. So we're going to do NASTRAN, standard format, and let's give it a file name. So let's call it bridge. Dot BDF. Okay. And now do export. And it'll export all the stuff. Very technical name. And if you go look, let's go into my documents. Where is that computer, I guess? My documents is over here. There you go. Here's the bridge BDF file. I can open that. With something that's gonna not know, like let's do it with Notepad. Where's Notepad? There's Notepad, and there you go. So now this is something you're familiar with. Okay, you can look at this and you can see this as Solver 101. Here's the subcase. We're writing out the element forces, SPC, strain, stress. You can add things that you want here. You can directly manually, I mean, you can manually edit this. Here are the bar elements. Here's the grid points. You don't have to worry about the spacings. It handles all that stuff for you. Here's the P bar L card. Here's the material card. Um, here are the SPC cards. Here are the force cards. You can see the SPCs are in set two. The forces are in, I'm sorry, the SPCs are in set one. The forces are in set two. And if we go up to here, you can see this subcase uses SPC set one, loads two. Okay? So you can actually now submit this to NASTRAN and execute it. All right? All right? That's the basic way you do it. Now, there's lots of other, there's lots of tutorials in HyperMesh. Like if you, if you look at stuff for HyperWorks desktop, this gives you an overview to working in this environment of HyperMesh. Um, you can go through the HyperWorks introduction and has some good tutorials, but you know we're not doing really complicated meshes, so so this isn't too bad. But this is not a, I mean I think this problem is of complexity enough where it's not a bad idea to use HyperMesh. Okay, when we do two and three D problems, we'll be using HyperMesh a little more. All right, but I think the nice thing again, just to reiterate, is that if you're used to the input card format, you can see how well HyperMesh does support it. There's very little mystery as to what's exactly going on. And, and again, you export that input file and you can directly edit it as well. All right. Well, I hope that helps. And I'm going to stop here. I probably should do another video later on about viewing results. But.